Hey guys. So she leaves a guy at rock bottom and when he becomes a winner, she's furious. Okay, yeah, I had a little reaction when I even read the title myself. So no wonder if you've read this story on Reddit that Better Bachelor did a video on and that I'm reviewing for you today. It's no wonder you would have also felt upset by it. So you've probably heard the saying that a man's love is tested when he becomes successful and a woman's love is tested when he loses everything. Isn't that the truth? So let's go through this video together. Please bear with me because I did have a TSA turning point. So, you know, you might be frustrated by some of my responses along the way, but as I've said in many of my other videos, this is my perspective as a woman giving you the other side. I'm not here to tell you to be in a relationship or to accept women's bad behavior. I'm just decoding women from a woman's side. So we're gonna go through the story and also what Better Bachelor has to say about it. And in the end, I'm going to share with you another true story who was in a similar situation, but who had a very different outcome. So if you're new to my channel, my name is Anna Jorgensen. Welcome to Just the Tip Tuesday. So Better Bachelor uh, calls himself the Joker with a face for radio. Now, I'm not sure if he's actually joking or if he's not giving himself or his face enough credit, but humble is good. So he talks about when a relationship ends and it's not the man ending the relationship, so many guys wonder what the heck they did wrong. They often think to themselves, why wasn't I worth the effort? I did everything and she still left. But then he also goes on to say that when she leaves, you pull out even more stops. You do even more for her thinking that you need to prove yourself to her to get her to come back to you. But then, when she sees you trying even harder, she actually translates that into seeing herself as higher value than you. And I agree, I've said this in many of my videos. He goes on to say that she thinks she's the catch and you haven't set boundaries or expectations for what you need in the relationship. And I agree. So Joker says that this can come from you being codependent and not seeing yourself as having enough value, but you overvalue your partner. And I say, I agree. This is like you putting her on a pedestal. Never put her on a pedestal because she'll look down on you. Back to Joker. He says that to get out of this situation, you actually need to let her know what your needs are. You need to set boundaries and you need to set expectations for what you need in the relationship. He says to make it clear of what your needs are and if they're not met, she's got to go. Make it clear you are the catch. So far, I totally agree. We are going to have some disagreement down the road here, so stick with me. But in the meantime, if you've watched my videos for any length of time, you know how many times I've said that respect equals attraction. If she can't respect you, she can't be attracted to you. So then he gets into this story that he found on Reddit where a woman gets upset because basically she left this guy at rock bottom and then when he became a winner, she was furious. And there's a reason why she was furious and it's gonna come up in the story. And the Joker, better bachelor, says, Basically, this woman was wondering what she'd done wrong, but she never accounted for a list of things that she'd done right. Whereas most men, if they've been left, they do make that list. They keep track of all those things that they've done right, thinking that that's gonna be enough. But some of the examples he used for men, thinking about all the things that they'd done for their woman are things like not resisting her friendships with men, and not trying to prevent her from going out with her friends or not getting super upset when she was out way too late. And he suggests that women don't usually keep a tally because they don't even have a tally. They don't do all these extra wonderful things that men do for them. Now, typically here, I will agree, women don't keep track in the same way, but I do know high value women who've pulled out all the stops for the guy that they were with and the guy still left them. Now, sometimes, it does happen in the reverse. There is a good woman. Yes, I know these days it's rare, and especially in the younger crowd, but it does happen. I know high value women who this has happened to where they've 
given it their all and the guy still left them. Now, I will also say that in some of these situations, the woman was a bit too needy or was a bit too codependent or was trying to, too hard. And if a man or a woman is trying too hard, it can come off as feeling needy and insecure and suffocating to the other person. Okay, so let's get into the story. He says that this was an article on Reddit and basically the relationship details. He at the time was 37 and she was 34. They didn't have kids. They'd been together for 10 years, married six. So quite an investment for both of them. And in the story, the woman says that her husband was basically a kid who didn't want to grow up. Now, yes, no, I always say men are all little boys inside and that's part of your charm. But there's a difference between boyish charm and not taking responsibility as an adult. Adulting is hard, ain't gonna deny it. Adulting is hard, but you gotta. And the Joker actually says, why would you stay with a guy for over four years if you knew that was the case? And I say, I agree. Do not go for a fixer upper. It's as is, where is. Do not hope for a potential. Do not go for a potential. Whatever you're signing up for is what you're signing up for today. Do not hope for something to change. Doing that will only chip away at the other person's self-worth because they'll never be good enough. If they're not good enough for you today, then don't hope that they'll change to be good enough for you tomorrow. This is whether you're a man or a woman. Because if you go for someone based on their potential and it never happens, that's like trying to build a house on a faulty foundation. You cannot build a successful relationship when from the very get-go, you're basically knowing that the other person is not good enough. Key point, you cannot love someone into emotional health, okay? <laughs> like super important. You can't fix them. You can't love them into being fixed. And even if you put up with them long enough for them to fix themselves, they might leave you because they've become a different person. So Joker continues the story about how this guy, after four years, lost his dad, lost his job, and gained a bunch of weight. So everything was just coming at him from all sides. And then he got really depressed and just started playing video games all the time, didn't help out around the house. Basically, he was acting like a teenager. Now the woman does admit that he did sell his junker car to help pay for the bills, but that was it. He didn't help out in any other way and he just stayed stuck in this depressive, unproductive state. And the Joker says, what would this look like if it was in the reverse? What if she'd lost her dad? What if she'd lost her job? What if she'd gained a bunch of weight? This actually happens quite often. And yes, the guys usually, yeah, usually sticks with her, even without getting a lot of wink, wink, nudge, nudge, or maybe even any. And I say, I agree. Society does have a double standard when it comes to this, but I don't necessarily think that it should have a double standard when it comes to this. Neither is fair, but it is a sad reality. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So the Joker continues with a story of basically the woman doing all the work to maintain the household and put food on the table, and he basically sat around playing video games and smoking weed all the time. Maybe some of you can relate to this. <laughs> Joker does acknowledge he wasn't pulling his weight fair enough. And there was extra of it. <laughs> and I say women will be, if they're healthy, high value women, they will be supportive, but there is a time limit on how long she'll be supportive. And I actually have a rule of thumb that I'll give you in a little bit. It just can't go on forever. Nah, forget it, I'll give it to you right now. Ooh, I'm giving it to you right now. Rule of thumb, if you have a major life event that really knocks the wind out of you, like you're like a death in the family, I've experienced that three times in the last five years, it's hard to get back on track. Yes, you can slip into a depression, I did. But you have to, after a year, we're gonna use a year as a rule of thumb. You have to start showing signs of getting back to who you were. So from the time your dad dies, you get about a year and then you got to start looking towards healing on that. Then you lose your job. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, you get another year on that. 
of wallowing and playing video games and doing nothing. But then you got to move forward on that. Now you can't be using up all your years consecutively. So you have three bad things happen to you. You don't get three years cumulatively. You don't get three years for all of them. After a year, you got to stop, at least be working on healing whatever the first crisis was looking like you're actually taking steps forward from that crisis. I might even be generous here. Most women need to feel emotional. They all need to feel emotionally safe. So some women, depending on how long they've been with you, how good your qualities are, how good her qualities are, how high value she is, how high value you were when she met you, what was your warranty in the beginning? What did you sell her on? Will determine just how long she'll actually wait. Because otherwise, here's what happens. If she's taking care of you for a long period of time, mother mode kicks in. Mother mode does not equal attraction mode. She can't be simultaneously nurturing mode and sexual arousal mode. And if it goes on for a long period of time, you become a dependent, not just financially, but emotionally, and that's very taxing. She can't be attracted to you if she's in nurturing mode. Don't hate the bee for the bee's needs. Now, here's the caveat clause. If you allow yourself more than a month or two to wallow, you will actually rewire your brain to potentially get stuck in that vicious cycle and you may not be able to bring yourself out of it. It's not fair to your partner to stay there forever. You have to be able to do your work to get yourself out of it. Okay, so let's get back to Joker. So the story continues that she divorces him and then a little while later, maybe a year, I'm, I can't remember exactly, she bumps into him and here he's lost the weight and he's dressed really well and he's obviously super successful and he's got his confidence back. He got hair plugs, he bought a condo and she's all like, why didn't he do that when he was with me? So they chat a bit, but then she leaves and she's all pissed off. Now Joker says, that if he's a smart man, even if she'd asked him to get together or to talk about, you know, what, what happened or be curious, that a smart man would not have done it anyway. And here's where I potentially disagree. As we've already discussed, even a high value woman has limits and three years is a long time. One year is pretty reasonable, but three years of smoking weed, not contributing like that's a pretty good indication that that might not ever end. Here's the other reality. Her leaving him probably was the catalyst for him to get his act together. Now it's a crappy catalyst, but it was effective in his life. So now he gets to have a better life because finally he chose to better his life. So as far as where I disagree a little bit with Joker, but better bachelor is if she was a high value woman, then yeah, it's reasonable to expect that after that long, that she'd be ticked that he couldn't do it when he was with her, if she was encouraging. And there's some points in there that she was encouraging him at the beginning, but when that failed, she eventually gave up. So if the woman you're with is supporting you and trying to be a teammate, then she might be worth reconsidering. I mean, there are very few women who will give you three years in that state. That's the reality. Don't shoot the messenger. I wasn't there during the design phase. Men and women are different. I'm just here decoding the women for you. You both need to have a commitment to contributing to your partner's happiness and satisfaction. That doesn't mean you're their only source of happiness and satisfaction, but you need to contribute just like she needs to contribute. Okay, back to Joker. Joker says, it's reasonable to be in a black hole state after all of that for three years. Sorry, I totally disagree. <laughs> I totally disagree. Or at least very few, even the high value women. The only time I will suggest that there's an exception is if you've lost a child. Let's not even talk about that because it'll make me cry. Okay, back to Joker. So he says she's angry because she gave him the best 10 years of her life. And I say, that's reasonable. Men have the luxury of being able to increase their market value, their relationship market value as they get older, just by accomplishing more, whether it's money or success or status or 
still being fit or still being alpha, women, sorry ladies, women's market value does drop as she gets older. Again, this is just a sad reality. There's one for, you know, the guy's side that, you know, when she's now in her mid thirties, now they don't have any kids. We don't know if she wanted kids, but she did mention that they didn't have kids. And now she, you know, what's the chances of her being able to find someone, get to know them, spend enough time with them to know if they are compatible and, you know, eventually pop out some wee beasts. Her window is closing. Like, her eggs have a shelf life. She did give that to him. Now the Joker also says that the woman mentions that he didn't have much money when they were together and that she should know that this is the same guy. Well, I say that's maybe a point in her favor. She was with him even though he didn't have money. She loved him, not his money. He didn't have money. So it's not that she's after the money he's made now, it's that she loved him even without money. She just wanted him to contribute. He wasn't ambitious when he was with her. She loved him anyway. She didn't love that he went into such a depression that he got fat and spent all his time smoking weed and playing video games. I mean, realistically, come on, you wouldn't want that from your woman either. You just might not leave her because of it. But men and women are different. Maybe after three years, you'd leave her. Maybe you should. So she's ticked because she did encourage him. She did stay with him. She did pick up the slack. She did love him when he was broke, but he couldn't get out of it until she left him. So she feels like inside, she wasn't worth it to him. And you know, in reality, that might be true. They might both be better off, but these are reasonable emotions to have considering the circumstance. And given that he did improve his life after she left him, it kind of does prove that she wasn't worth it. So it's reasonable for her to be a little upset by that, thinking after 10 years that maybe their relationship was going somewhere or hoping that it was gonna be going somewhere, continuing to go somewhere positive for both of them. Now, a little side note for women, as I said in other videos, nagging is not effective. Now I know eventually you wanna go there, but you can't nag a man into motivation. You can encourage him into being inspired, but you can't nag him into being motivated. It won't have any lasting results anyway, and or he'll be bitter and resentful toward you. Now Joker says that she was actually the one that was better off because she decided to leave. She left him at rock bottom. Now on this one, I partially agree because yes, he, he was at rock bottom. He was in a crappy place and she left him. So that only threw salt on the wound. But again, it's a fact that a woman in her thirties has lower market value than a woman in her twenties, particularly if she wants kids and or particularly if other men want kids. More likely to be able to do that with someone in their 20s, getting to know them, having enough time to actually enjoy a relationship before you have to go there, rather than, holy smokes, we better get on it because eggs have a shelf life. Now the Joker says the next part of the story is basically that she's upset because he's become successful and she didn't. And that if the dude wasn't successful, then she wouldn't be upset. And I'd say it depends. If she wanted kids in that relationship, she already knew he was broke, she would have wanted kids with him regardless. But if kids weren't a factor, then yes, I do agree. If kids were a factor, she's partially upset because investing that time with him reduced her potential to be able to have kids with somebody else. So Joker goes on to say that she is bitching about her health issues and that she's not doing well financially and she's now living below her standard of living and Joker says, it's not her ex's fault. And I say, ain't karma a bitch. So <laughs> this is where my, this is my TSA turning point. So this part of her attitude reveals more about her character. Everything up to this point, I can understand why she'd be upset. But from where she is now, and yes, she may have had some other things happen in her life that have knocked the sails out of her ship sailing ship, sailboat, that knocked her down. But 
if she's got this kind of bitter attitude, then she probably did have it when she was with him as well. Key point, people reveal their true character when their safety is tested, when their survival is tested. So Joker says that instead of finding out how this guy got out of his funk with curiosity, she was just bitter wondering why he couldn't have done it when he was with her. And Joker says he can't answer that, but I can. And then I'm going to share Bob's story. So the reason why he couldn't do it when he was with her was because of one of three reasons. One, they weren't a good match from the start. Two, he hadn't dealt with whatever issues had caused him to be unable to move forward in personal growth. Or number three, she didn't inspire him to be his best self. As I just mentioned, nagging isn't motivating. Encouraging is inspiring. And if you wanna know if she's really the one, number three is imperative. In fact, it's one of the top five signs she is the one. And if you want to know what the other four signs are, you'll want to watch my video, How to Know She's the One. In the meantime, Joker says that all men want to live like teenage boys, having hobbies and joking around and just playing. And I say, I agree, true, as I've already said, that's part of your charm. It just has to be balanced with taking responsibility and accepting accountability where you need to. Now, if her character hasn't changed during this difficult time she's gone through, then she'll be able to pull herself out of this black hole. But if not, not only did he win by improving his life, he won by losing her. Okay, now Bob's story. This is a true story. So just after buying a ranch back in 2008, just before the big financial crash, and after getting married, Bob lost his job but his woman didn't leave him. He ended up eventually having to take a job that paid 60% less than what he was previously making. She didn't leave him. They had to sell stuff off, other assets. She didn't leave him. They had to cash in the 401. She didn't leave him. In Bob's words, he says, I was devastated. Oh, this might make me cry. My wife supported me through the difficult times and we made it through. Women do care. You just have to be selective about finding the right one. Clearly Bob found the right one. Congratulations, Bob. High five to Bob, high 10, clap. <laughs> so I say amen to that. Choose well, filter, filter, filter. Thanks for being here and God bless.